Hello everyone and welcome to my messy channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the movie Only You, a psychological movie disguised as a romantic comedy, starring Aunt May and Iron Man before either of them got involved with Spider-Man. The movie starts with the young Faith and her brother Larry, playing with an Ouija board in hopes of finding the name of the man she's destined to be with. When the name Damon Bradley pops up, she is convinced that that's the name of her soulmate. Later, Faith and her friends go to a carnival where they decide to see a fortune teller. Faith asks her if she can see her destiny. The fortune teller caresses the ball and tells Faith exactly what she wants to hear. His name is Damon Bradley. Faith almost runs away from shock without paying the fortune teller. Destiny is two dollars. And she tells her this. The truth is, you make your own. 14 years later, Faith is now a teacher and has a boyfriend, though she is still obsessed with the idea of destiny. That night, she has dinner with her friends and announces she's engaged. Her friends make a fuss about her ring, which in fairness is pretty, but they sense that she's not satisfied with the whole thing. They get interrupted by the phone ringing, and it ends up being her brother Larry asking to talk to his wife Kate. He badgers Kate to return home immediately and prepare food for when his friends come by for poker night. Kate tells him that this is her one night out, and she wants to relax, but Larry throws a fit and starts screaming that she gets home immediately. The guy is a man-child, and watching him on my screen was a painful experience. The next day, Faith has her engagement party, where Larry and Kate have a mini-argument, and Faith's future mother-in-law passes her her wedding dress, which Faith is displeased about. Her fiancé convinces her to wear it as a favor to his mom, and Faith concedes. Later in her apartment, Faith tries on the dress, and Kate's reaction is exactly like mine. What the heck are you wearing? They start talking about how life is not like in the movies. Kate hits her with the disappointing reality of married life, but Faith still believes in the whimsies of dreams and tells Kate that this moment they're having right now is unforgettable. Kate gets emotional, but before Faith can find out what's going on with her friend, they get interrupted by the phone ringing, again. This time, however, it's not Larry. It's her husband's friend calling to apologize in advance for not being able to attend the wedding. When she asks for his name, he says it's Damon Bradley. Faith obviously reacts in a very normal way. She immediately rushes to the airport without even changing. She runs around trying to find him, but he's already got on the plane. She tries to convince the gate agent to let her in to no avail. And then she says this crazy line. The man I was supposed to marry is on that plane. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. She calls Kate and tells her that she needs to get on the plane to go after him, so she asks her to bring her her passport, pack some of her stuff, and meet her at the airport. Kate arrives with Leslie and tells Faith that she's coming with her because she's worried. Faith goes on about how he could be the right man, but Kate is having none of it. Once they arrive in Venice, they check into the hotel where Damon Bradley is staying. Faith called six different hotels in Venice before she got confirmation of where he's staying as if that isn't weird. But when they ask the hotel receptionist about him, he tells him that he already checked out. Faith is in disbelief and almost picks up a fight with the receptionist. Kate intervenes, but she only makes matters worse so they leave before they make a scene. On their way to their room, they pass the room Damon Bradley was staying at. They sneak their way in, trying to find clues of where he went. While going through his garbage, they find a scribbled phone number. They ask the receptionist to call the number and ask for Damon Bradley. The number ends up belonging to a shop in Rome, and a woman who works there named Anna knows him. The next day, they rent a car and head to Rome, but they get lost and run out of gas. While stranded, Kate opens up to Faith about her relationship with her husband, confessing that she decided to leave him. Faith tries to comfort her in her whimsy way, but it doesn't work. Thankfully, they get help from a group of passing nuns and they get back on the road. They get to the shop and ask Anna about Bradley, but she starts going off in Italian, clearly upset. Luckily, the shop owner, a man named Giovanni, comes in to help. He tells them where Bradley will be dining at a restaurant tonight and offers them a place to stay the night. The man wastes no time flirting with Kate, and she seems to be receptive to his moves. The two get ready afterward and leave for the restaurant. Kate tells Faith to ask the maitre d'hotel about where Damon is sitting, but Faith says this. I will. I wanted to see if maybe he'd notice me first. Are you dumb? I aspire to be as delusional as her. Anyway... Kate asks for her, and they find where he's seated, but they can only see his blue blazer sleeve, so Faith goes to talk to him. But when she gets there, he is already gone. She chases after him, even though she doesn't know what he looks like, and bumps into Dr. Doom. He yells at her in a questionable accent, and picks up her missing shoe while also running after her. She breaks down crying when she can't find him and suggests another lunatic plan to track Damon down. RDJ catches up to her and helps her wear her shoe in a very love-struck daze. Kate finally says what I've been thinking this entire movie so far. I think it's time we got some professional help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a detective. Like a psychiatrist. 
Yo, it's not funny. It's really not funny. <laughs> She thanks the guy in a very cold tone and he starts talking about shoes because he's in the shoe business. I'm sure there's a metaphor there about her going from a foot doctor to a shoe salesman, but I don't care. Faith continues to ignore him while Kate tells him about Faith's fixation with this unknown man she thinks is her soulmate. The shoe guy offers to help, so Faith tells him the name of her soulmate, and lo and behold, the shoe guy turns out to be Damon Bradley. <gasps> How convenient. Her demeanor completely changes, and the two seem to hit it off well. Too well, actually. They spend a flirty romantic night that ends on a high note of making out in her hotel room until Faith drops this bomb on him. I'm engaged. Well, at least she's honest. She tells him she's going to tell her fiancé to break off the engagement, and Damon starts to panic. Just as she's about to make the phone call, he distracts her by kissing her and drops another bomb. I'm not Damon Bradley. What? Understandably, she's enraged and tries to leave the room, but he keeps on making excuses for himself, trying to brush off the fact that he lied about his whole identity like it's nothing. He confesses that he lied because he was in love with her, but she's not buying it. Electric chair. She goes to Kate and they start talking shit about men, as they should. The following morning, Kate calls her husband, but doesn't say a word. Someone knocks on the door and it's Peter with a giant bouquet, ready to apologize, but Faith is not there. This time he makes excuses to her friend Kate, trying to charm his way out of not being a creep, but it's not working. And then I saw her, I looked into her eyes, and wow, something happened, something that's never happened to me before. Mania? <laughs> She asks if he's lying about his feelings, and he throws a fit about how it was just a name, and that the whole idea of chasing a man based on a name is ludicrous, the one thing he's right about. Nevertheless, he tries to win Kate's favor, but Giovanni comes in and asks Kate out. They go on a date, and this time, Kate looks more hesitant about accepting his advances. Later that day, Faith tells Kate that she's giving up for good. Kate asks her about Peter, and if she's not going to see him anymore, she says no. And then Kate drops this insane line. You're crazy about him. What? Huh? Did I miss something? Faith denies it, and they go back and forth about it until Giovanni comes to pick Kate up for another outing. Back at the pension they're staying at, Peter shows up unannounced, and Faith is less than thrilled to see him, obviously. He tries once again to convince her that they're meant to be together, and that she doesn't love her fiancé, so why bother marrying him? She says this. Who says I don't love him? And he finally backs away. Nope, he doesn't actually because he comes back the next day when they're about to leave. He chases the taxi down and tells Faith she can't go because he found the real Damon Bradley. She stops the taxi and decides to go to the hotel where the real Damon Bradley is staying with Giovanni. Once they arrive, they ask for him and the receptionist says he's by the pool, wearing a gold medallion. She approaches a guy with that description, visibly disappointed that he's not a hot guy. But before she can ask him, she hears Damon's name being called, and that's when she sees the real Damon Bradley. She gets a little tongue-tied, but she manages to ask him on a dinner date. While getting ready, Giovanni comes in and invites them to his friend's yacht party. Peter gives Faith a pair of shoes, and as he's waiting for her to dress up, he snoops around the room like a creep, stealing a photo they took together and sniffing her perfume. When she comes out, she thanks him for what he did for her, and he just pulls her into a dance and drops another confession. I love you. No matter what happens tonight, now she's on a date with Damon, and he tells her that he noticed her even before she came to talk to him at the pool. Peter is sitting outside the restaurant spying on them like the stalker he is. While he's moping, an old man sits next to him, and he strikes up a conversation with him about destiny, saying that it's written in the stars. Whatever that means. Now they're at the yacht party, and Giovanni is flirting heavily with Kate, and they share a kiss. The date between the supposed soulmates is not going well. Faith starts to feel uncomfortable with the way he's touching her. She repeatedly tells him to stop, and when Peter notices, he plummets the guy into the ground. We find out through their brawl that Peter hired the guy to pretend to be Damon Bradley. <gasps>When Faith storms off in anger and hurt, he has the audacity to gaslight her into thinking she's the one at fault. I love you so much, you are so ungrateful. Do you know what kind of planning this took? Hotels, reservations, I mean, God, this was a major production, I did it all for us! This bitch! And I've never said this unironically, but I think this will be the first time I actually say it unironically and mean it. Kill yourself. Kate and Faith go back to the hotel where Faith has a breakdown in the lobby, and the receptionist does his best to console her. 
I forgot to mention that Kate rejected Giovanni at the yacht party, and when she tries to talk to him the next day, he drives off with Peter. But then her husband suddenly appears. He tells her he loves her, he misses her, and that he's been miserable without her. And she instantly forgives him. The married couple decides to stay a bit more in Italy, so Faith goes alone to the airport. While Kate and Larry are having breakfast, he confesses that he was the one who pushed the letters at the Uja board when they were kids, and that he bribed the fortune teller to lie to his sister. So surprise, surprise, there was no fate or destiny at play. While waiting for their turn to board at the airport, they hear the PA say this. Mr. Damon Bradley, please come to the information desk. Mr. Damon Bradley, please come to the information desk. The two run to the information desk at full speed, and that is when we get the reveal of the real and true Damon Bradley. Peter starts blabbering about how Faith has been looking for him all her life, and that he's lucky to have her, and how he's in love with her but can't have her. He bids Faith goodbye, and she does not like that. Damon asks her if she loves him too, and she finally admits that, yes, she is in love with Peter. She runs to the flight boarding to Boston, and by the magic of love, they let her in even though boarding was closed. She gets on the plane, he has his feet on top of the seat in front of him, which is disgusting. They share a look and they kiss. The end. This would not be considered a romantic comedy in our modern day. Like, imagine a woman breaking off her stable relationship for some childhood soulmate fantasy, chasing a faceless man in foreign lands, and convincing herself that this man she doesn't know is her soulmate. Imagine a guy who falls for you at first sight, lies to you about his identity, and manipulates you into liking him. They're both crazy, so maybe they're meant for each other. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this messy recap. Thank you for watching. Bye.